All right. Welcome to the California Law and Business Study Guide, Part 2. Uh, licensed Contractor Requirements and Qualifying Individuals by Paint Thinner Gang. Okay. Requirements to become a contractor. One, you must be older than 18 years old, have a valid Social Security number, or an I-10 individual taxpayer identification. These are just two ways that you're going to be paying uh, uh, your taxes with your license. Okay. Now this has nothing to do with the corporation. This just has to do with you, the individual applying for the license. Uh, four years in the trade, and when it says four years, you could also have two years in college, two years in. Um, in a in a trade school that'll also count as a four years in the trade so you don't, I don't i don't have to be in that trade you could also be in that in that trade for two years and two years for the college it'll count as four you have to be a journeyman okay and that is one of the requirements um a journeyman is just someone that can be left alone and you do the job by themselves you could either be a foreman contractor homeowner builder someone that builds on their own property and that'll be also included as a uh as a little requirement for that and the last thing you'll need is proof of work a certificate of work experience that's just the uh, that's going to be a reference typically when people go for this they always get someone who is licensed to sign for them just so the CSLB knows that what you're saying is true and not just false because anybody could just say I've had 20 years in framing 20 years in carpentry or whatever and you know that's not true who doesn't need to be licensed? This is one thing that most people don't uh, either know or they don't. That goes over their head. They typically just think of the first thing right here. They see the $500 mark, but there's a lot of things that are different that can apply to someone else. So, someone who works under under $500 uh, uh, per contract, whether it be in materials or labor, doesn't need to be licensed. Okay, so you don't have to be licensed as long as you work under those 500. Now, some people think that by dividing those payments or having the, the owner buy the materials themselves and them just getting paid the labor, their labor that'll get them out of the $500 limit. And that's not true. Um, the $500 limit includes labor and materials, so remember that. Okay. An employee who is paid in wages, not the boss or contractor. This is just someone who gets hired. Not you know, uh, someone who gets hired doesn't have to be licensed. Uh, it could be a public personnel working on public pro projects. That's someone who already works in, let's say, in the city, and they're just being paid to do something for the city. Do you don't have to be licensed? Um, an officer of a corps acting within the scope of their office. Public utilities, same thing as a city uh, worker working under specified conditions. Um, oil and gas operations performed by an owner, a VC. Uh, homeowner builders. Homeowner builders are people who either own the property in which uh, they live in and they um, do, you know, construct or change something, um, or they're the builders who build on basically on a either their the home they own. Or on a lot they own okay so you can so let me just go with this because on the on the website it has only one thing in which it tells you but there's actually three and these things are different so you're gonna have, you're actually gonna be tested on one of these at least in the test so remember this a homeowner builder who builds or improves existing structures on their pro on their on their own property if they are do the work themselves or use their own employees paid in wages to do the work cannot okay so if you're a homeowner builder you don't have to have a license if you have an employee or employees to do the work for you but they just have to be paid in wages you know so that's if you uh, do it yourself and have someone and your employees do it for you okay but the home cannot uh, cannot be sold within 12 months after it is completed and when I say home I mean it could be a uh, a room uh, in addition to the garage or you know just something that you've done that you've done to the home 
but it just can't be sold within 12 months. And that's just to safeguard that nothing goes wrong when you, you know, because you, you're obviously not a contractor, so you need to make sure what you're doing is, is good. Uh, homeowner builders who hire licensed subcontractors. Okay, so if you're a homeowner builder, let's say you have a lot and you want to build something on your lot, you hire a sub, right? So that sub is you basically it's legal for you to hire him because even though you're not a uh, prime contractor you can hire as much subs that's that's like anybody just hiring someone to get their home painted and or whatever but you can only do this to four structures within a 12 month period okay and you cannot sell those four structures okay or should I say you cannot sell more than four structures during a 12 month period so that means if you do that to four homes um, you're gonna have to wait another year before you could do that again and sell those homes okay homeowner builders will improve principal place of residence that's where you live at you have to live there for at least 12 months to be considered a principal place of residence you can only sell those two homes that you've either built or have done something to them for every three years so that's if you live there now these right here are areas where uh, you own the land and want to improve something. This right here is the same thing except you live in it. That's the difference. Okay, a sale or installation of finished products not to become a fixed part of the structure. Now this is just something that it could either be furniture, uh, let's say a vanity that isn't attached to walls to framing. That'll You don't need to have be a license if you just uh, sell those and install them for the client. Okay, a seller of installed carpets who owns a, let's say, a, a business of, you know, selling carpets, but you hire a contractor to do the license, I mean, to do the installation, then you don't need to have, you don't need to be licensed because the contractor is already licensed. Um, security alarm company oper operators, um, those don't, they don't have to be licensed either. Now, if you're going to be a fire alarm company operator, you must be licensed by the CSLB. But that's that's uh, the fire alarm company operator, not the security alarm. Okay, but each one of these always they always have their different type of licenses and business licenses. So you know that's not the same thing as a contractor's. Okay, persons whose activities consist only of installing satellite antennas. You know your uh, your cable company guy, he doesn't have to be a licensed contractor. Uh, but he does have to be registered with the Bureau of Electric and Appliance Repair. Okay. Contractors who are not licensed. So, and this mainly has to do with people who are acting as if they are. Okay. Now, this has nothing to do with um, a worker or someone who does jobs for themselves, but under the $500 mark. And by the way, you can advertise if you're not a licensed contractor you just need to have not licensed in that advertisement to be you know to be within the law okay so contractors who are not licensed there are no penalties for not being for not being licensed as long as your work is under five hundred dollars now again that's something that people should know remember you cannot divide the payments to avoid the five hundred dollar mark okay the CSLB has a statewide investigation fraud team that goes after licensed contractors and that's people who act as if they are licensed and who do jobs that are about 500 now every once in a while people do get caught they have videos of this all the time on youtube on the cslb website and you know they get caught for doing work illegally so don't be don't be that guy first offense typically you get a misdemeanor now you might not get it, it all depends on your circumstances but Typically you do, and it could give you six months in jail and a $500 fine. The second offense is 20% of the contract price of the work you do, um, a $4,500 $4, fine, and no less than 90 days in county jail, okay? Okay, and a state of emergency, 
or disaster, anybody acting in the capacity of a licensed contractor can be charged with a felony. So if you start doing work illegally as a as if you were licensed, and whether it be in California, I don't know if this applies anywhere else, but at least in California, if you do this when a, you say an earthquake happens or something like that, uh, you know, a fire, and someone hires you thinking you're licensed, you could be faced with a felony instead of a misdemeanor. Okay, if the CSLB finds out the individual is acting within the capacity of a contractor, they will they will order a cease and desist with a penalty of up to fifteen thousand dollars. Now, this is typically when they think you're acting as if you were licensed, and you'll have fifteen days to appeal the right in to appeal in writing. If you don't, then that'll be your, the final order, and they could give you a penalty all the way up to fifteen thousand dollars for you acting as if you were. Before I head on to the other one, I just want to put this in there that when Arnold Schwarzenegger came into office in California as the governor, he put in the law that if an old client wants to sue you for work dating back 10 years or whatever, they can do that if you were not licensed. And that's even if they knew you were licensed or weren't. So if you did a job, let's say for $20,000, and the last five years before Arnold Schwarzenegger was, uh, after Schwarzenegger was, uh, basically, you know, uh, became the governor. That person, if he has your information where you're at, he could, she or she could, he or she could sue you and you're going to have to pay back all that money, even if you did it correct. So that's one thing you also got to remember. Even if you're not licensed right now, I highly recommend you should get the license. And if you don't want to get the license, you could always get a handyman, if you, a handyman license or whatever. You know, you don't have to get, become a contractor because even then again, it's always, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard business. Too many competition, too cheap. And a lot of people, they don't do work right. Okay. Who can become a contractor? Any individual or business entity that has re the requirements stated by the CSLB. Okay, an individual is a sole proprietorship, that means sole ownership, that means you run the business as if it was you. Okay, so that business is you, think about it like you, um, you're going to pay, pay, you're going to be paying taxes like, like if it was you. Okay, so you don't get any, any corporation uh, tax cuts or anything like that. You're going to be paying your regular, uh, what is it, 15%, and then on top of that, you're also going to be paying your self-employed tax. And if... If you're making good money and you're not worried about that, then go ahead and do that. That's and by the way, this is the easiest uh, business to set up the sole proprietorship. When you start getting to partnership, there you're gonna need two or more people, and this becomes a little risky. Um, typically, when two or more people can become a partner, um, I don't think it's the right way of doing it because you that once that person is in. They can't get out. And once a person dies, or they say they do get out, they you know they don't want to work no more. That partnership, you know, it dissolves. It it can't work anymore, and you can't bring anybody in else either, to uh to make up for the the person that left. So, I think partnerships are the worst way of doing business in a in a in a license, uh, in a contractor's you know business because, you know, that one guy could be doing. 80% of the work while the other guy is doing 20. Now, obviously, you could make a, a nice contract between you guys, get a lawyer and whatever, but there's always going to be that one guy putting extra and that guy, that one guy putting less. So, that's the, I don't think this is a good way for anybody to go. Corporations, you got the S, the C Corp, S Corp, LLC, and you got the joint venture. Now, S Corp, the C Corp, you get um, double taxation um, unless you know what you're doing and you know how to evade taxes and when I say this I don't mean illegally I mean you're within the scope of the law then I recommend uh, I guess you get in here if you don't like most people I'm gonna say 90% of people they're not gonna want this right here Dude, don't get it this is the worst one to start off and this is the worst one to be dealing with unless you know how to run the business and S Corp is, I think, maybe the best way to go about it. 
if you want to get the protection of a corporation you want to also be treated as if you were an LLC uh, not an LLC but you get the pass through and you could basically take money out of your business you can never take money out of this without you know it being a hassle and paying taxes and stuff this one you do the same thing you pay taxes but not as much so S Corp is the best way to go I think LLC I haven't been up to date on the LLC because most people don't choose this in California at least in the construction industry because there's a lot of things here and there that you know that most people don't want to deal with LLCs because basically they don't have to pay uh, I mean when they do something wrong you know they all put the blame on the LLC and you know in big contractors they don't want to deal with this kind of thing so LLC uh, it's a nifty if you know how if you know how it works and you know you know that you'll be actually getting in everything and we'll go for it I never met anybody who has an LLC yet not that not to mean that I haven't asked or stuff like that or maybe I've met him but I never asked but everybody that I've seen to know gets an S Corp uh, the joint venture that's when two or more licenses become together as one so let's say you have a um, um, a drywaller a painting and a uh, you know a cabinet guy or whatever you know they all become one and they all they're all able to do that to do those trades using one license um, I've yet to meet one person who does this I've met one guy uh, who has done it but but with two instead of more he's done it with drywalling and painting you know they get their business together and this is not the same as a partnership that's a totally different thing than a joint venture okay joint venture you could bring in uh, um, sole proprietorship individuals partnerships corporations S Corp and they'll all be considered a joint venture stuff like that so you could bring any of this any of these into this okay qualifying individuals person who has a license now the moment you get your license you are now a qualified individual okay so a qualified individual can be the sole proprietor of a company that means you're the boss you can also be the own not uh, the owner of a company okay you can also be an RME or an RMO I said that backwards you can be an RMO or an RME it's the same thing though uh, well not the same thing but you know what I mean it doesn't matter what place it's at um, basically this means you lend your license to someone or a business now before I head on to any of this I'm gonna let you know that when people say that are on the requirements you need it says that you need 18 uh, to be at least 18 years old and have four years experience to qualify for a license if you have a qualified individual basically lend you the license you know basically giving you the it's qualifying you to own that to get a license and everything without you doing all the tests and all that stuff then that could have then that could be uh, one of the things that am I asking the test now that because that's true you don't have to have for years you also don't have to have a uh, someone basically get their te their license on you know if someone is able to get to get someone who is quali a qualified individual to you know basically lend them their license they can pretty much uh, you know pass you through the the test you don't have to ever do it you don't have to ever go to school as long as you have someone now you are gonna have to pay at least um, I think 10% but typically an RMO is gonna be 20% because he's gonna have to be a common own he's gonna have to have a common ownership okay so for him to act as a qualifier so typically um, typically uh, the additional firm is gonna be a sub a subsidiary or a joint venture with the first so that basically means you're gonna be under the wing of uh, of that person but you know you're gonna the person who you lend it to is gonna be the main boss you're just gonna be the you know like a like a manager or something like that yeah, or at least I try to say something like that because I want you guys to understand how it goes you're gonna be a leading officer within that company okay um, 
basically uh you're you can't if you're gonna have an rmo if you're gonna be an rmo you could do this for up to three companies that means you could be you could lend them your license to run let's say let's say there's a general contractor who wants to do uh everything right so he's gonna need either two licenses or have two different trades working on his project but let's say he wants to do both of them of uh, the two trades that are necessary so he could do the whole job he's gonna have to get at least two other licenses so let's say he gets you which you know for to, for you to be his rmo um he could do that to you to another guy and uh he's pretty much set and you could do that you being the rmo could do that to two to three different companies in one year now that'll mean you you'll be getting a paycheck from three different companies every uh it's, i don't know it all depends on how they uh on you guys you know settle it but it could be every month every three months every six months whatever um you know an rme is going to be responsible managing employee an rmo is going to be managing uh, responsible managing officer so an rme is a responsible managing an employee that means you are an employee if you're gonna be an army even though you lend your license and everything you're gonna be you know you know you're letting you're letting them able to work the trade that you like got licensed for you're still gonna have to be an employee so most people don't like being an army okay now when you become an army you can only do you can only lend your license to one company okay and when I say company, I could it could be a person or a company, depending on how it's so, um, how is how there's a set up, either a pro uh, sole proprietorship or a or a entity. Okay. Now you need to work at least 32 hours a week, or 80% of business operating hours for you to be an RME. And this is going to be this right, these three things that I just put are are going to be on the test. So remember that. What do you need to actually be a working contractor? A working, a you need you're gonna need a fifteen thousand dollar contractor's bond, or fifteen dollar fifteen thousand dollars, in an account, in the same name of the CSLB, and that most people. And let me just uh, explain to you why uh, they're asking for two different things, or one thing, but you have the option of choosing another. Typically. Contractors bond you get it from a bonding agency and it's gonna cost you roughly 300 200 to 300 dollars and That right there is gonna give you a fifteen thousand dollar Contractors bond It's not the same thing as insurance because insurance you don't have to pay uh, back your Insurance agency when you know you lose a you you know you, you have a loss of fifteen thousand dollars Let's say it but it is what it is now a bonding agency they lend you fifteen thousand dollars, and you're gonna have to pay them back. Even though you already uh, gave them two hundred dollars to supposedly to carry you, you're still gonna have to pay us, pay back those fifteen thousand dollars if somehow they get lost. Um, and when I say lost, I mean, um, let's say you damage a, a, a homeowner's, uh, you know, uh, car or something, and it's fifteen thousand dollars in damages. You're gonna have to pay back those fifteen thousand uh, dollars to the agency, or you could have. Fifteen thousand dollars in an account if you have the money, which some people do want this option because that means you won't have to be paying, you know, your two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars up a year. No, you it could you know you could have it for maybe you could have that bonding agency give you the bond for ten years and nothing might happen. So maybe you know if you go this route, you'll save those ten years of money. That you'll be given to that agency even though you you know if you do your car if you do every your work right you'll then you'll never have to pay that money um the only person who i know who when i say who i know um who doesn't need a pull uh, a a fifty thousand dollar bond is going to be a pull contractor now they'll need a twelve thousand five hundred dollar bond not the 15. okay one thing you'll also need to be a contractor is a workers compensation um, now you do not need to have it if you're uh, if you don't have any workers and if you're the owner and you don't want to pay your know, workers compensation for yourself you can be exempt which means you don't have to pay it now you won't be uh, 
covered by workers' compensation because you're choosing to get out of it. So, you know, that's one thing. Now, the C39 roofing contract there must have workers' compensation, even for himself or for employees. You're also going to need an I, an EIN, an employer's ID number. Okay. Now, every, every uh, two years or more, you're going to need to renew your licenses. Now, let's say you are working right let's say you're getting a lot of bids and everything every that you're gonna have to renew that license every two years now let's say you want it to be inactive right let's say you have let's say you chose to get out of a contractor's uh contractor the contractor's business but you still want to have your license so you don't have you know let's say you don't have to uh you don't have to work no more but you still want to have it there just in case you know some job pops out or whatever then, you'll, then you're going to have to renew it every four years. Okay. And when you have an inactive license, then you don't have to pay workers' compensation and you also don't have to have a bond. Um, an expired license. That's a license that you never pay uh, yearly, uh, every the two years or the four years. That license must be renewed within five years. And you're going to have to pay 15% for the fees. Which means you're going to have to pay 50% more on top of that, okay, for being late. Now, if you don't pay it, pay up after the fifth year, then it's going to become void, and you'll have to do the whole process with the CSLB again, and that means you're going to take the test again, uh, basically deal with the whole thing, fingerprints, everything, all that stuff. Okay, different types of uh, licenses. Oh, and let me just say this. Before you actually even take the test, they're going to ask you for your fingerprint. And that's typically when you send in your application to the CSLB. They're going to end up sending you maybe uh, three weeks later, four weeks later to take a, uh, basically to get your fingerprints tested. And they're going to basically, basically give you a whole background check. And that's just to uh, see that you haven't done any crimes. And if you have done crimes, I recommend you state it. In your application, it's going to ask you how many, if you've ever been caught with, uh, let's say you've ever been charged with a crime. Now, it doesn't mean arrested, because a lot of people get arrested, but they never get charged with a crime. So, you know, remember, it's when you get charged. You have to write down what you get charged for. And even if you have a big felony or whatever, that doesn't mean you can't be licensed. Okay, so a lot of times they let stuff like that slide. Okay. A different type different types of licenses um, you got your class a general engineering not most people know this um, and this one this is basically the principal country business in connection with fixed work requiring specialized engineering and skill including the following divisions that just means you're gonna need a lot of math basically you're gonna need engineers architects and typically these are when you when you have a class a engineering um, it's typically huge projects like let's say stadiums, uh, government jobs, city jobs, uh, things that require uh, more than a, just a regular builder. You're gonna need a, a huge team of you know builders, general engineers, architects, designers, stuff like that. That's typically when the class A uh, gets into the into play. Now, the one thing, the or the couple things you're gonna remember from the class A and you are going to get tested on this is that class A always um, basically includes the work that that would be flood control and then waterways, harbors, docks, highways, streets and roads, tunnels, airports, airways, sewers, sewage disposal plants, systems, waste reduction plans, bridges, overpasses, underpasses, and other similar works. Now I recommend you read all of this over here on the, on the, on the page, on the screen. Read all of it and memorize uh, most of it. You don't have to actually memorize all of it, but these things that I've highlighted in red are the things you should, but it's never a bad idea to give this a look. Okay, a general B, general builders. That's the basically the contractor that most people know about. That's the one that you hire to do an extra an extra room, and he'll hire the 
a lot of the trades, whether it be plumbing or electrical or whatever it is. But the general bee is the one that takes care of the framing and carpentry. Now, a general bee can do everything, okay? But he needs to have at least two trades working under him. So he needs to hire at least two other trades. They could be either subs, uh, drywall or whatever. Or he'll have to be licensed himself at the two in two other different trades for him to be able to do all of it. So let's say he, um, you know, let's say this guy wants to build a half a whole house, you know, addition to a one that's already built. He could do all the carpentry and framing, but let's say when it comes down to uh, electrical, plumbing, uh, painting, drywall, uh, windows, all that stuff, he's gonna have to hire at least two other trades for him to do the rest of whatever he wants to do. Okay, so. So let's say he wants to do the windows. He's still going to have to hire two different trades for him to be able to do the windows. Now, let's say this General B is licensed with two other uh, licenses. Then he'll be able to do everything without any, uh, basically any anything limiting, limiting him. Okay, and the only things that the, a General B cannot do, which I put right here, is a C... 16 fire protection and the in the c57 while drilling classification now these are the only um, two things that a general b cannot do unless he is licensed so typically most general bees don't go and get these licenses doesn't mean you can't um, just it's still a lot of hassle so most either just get a sub to do it for them before you know before uh, they do any of these uh two things because these are really important things. This is why a general B cannot do this unless he is licensed. Okay, so specialty licenses. These are the licenses that would include everything else besides the general B. Now, that's just someone who has a special skill that is required when it comes to, you know, the building. And basically, there's a, right now, there's like 45 different licenses. And that's including the asbestos certification and the hazardous uh, material um, hazardous material disposal I think okay so you got all these right here uh, the ones I highlighted in red are the ones that the general B cannot do and that he'll be have to he'll have to be licensed okay these two so give it a look um, honestly if you don't know what this is then I guess you haven't even chosen your your uh, your license so but whatever give it a look um, look at all the ones there are and if you see one well stick with that so, you know. okay license transfers or changes this is when you want to transfer your license or change it yeah okay so a part so a sole proprietorship cannot be cannot transfer the license so that means let's say it's called uh, John Deere's painting company okay so let's say another guy wants to get in the business and he tells the John Deere painting company that he wants to buy it now John Deere agrees to it so he gives it or he sells it to that person wanting it now even though he sold him the company he hasn't sold him the license because the license on a sole proprietorship cannot be sold that person that bought the John Deere painting company is gonna have to be either He's, he's, he's going to have to basically get his license of his own, which he's going to have to get with the CSLB and do all of that unless he is able to find a uh, an RMO or an RME. So, sole proprietorships cannot transfer the license. Partnerships, again, which is why I said partnerships are the worst way to go. They cannot add or remove members, so that means they cannot even change the license. Okay? So... Typically, when a partnership has a uh, problem where one die, where a partner le um, leaves or dies, they can basically get in contact with the CSLB and ask for an extra one year for them to keep working while they have some projects running. Now, for them to get the one year extra, they're going to have to contact the CSLB within 90 days. Now, when the partner dies or whatever, because they cannot add new people, 
the partners that are left are gonna are gonna have to apply for new licenses. But the person that had the license before, let's say, uh, in that partnership, there was a carpenter and a uh, and a window installer, right? So the carpenter guy dies, the window installer stays, and he still wants to stay in that partnership, even though you know basically there's only one guy left. For him to stay in that partnership, he's gonna have to get a con a uh, carpenter's license. Okay. For it to still be working the partnership, because if he doesn't, then he's basically screwed. Okay, corporations. Corporations can transfer licenses. So that means if you buy an S Corp or a C Corp from someone else, you're also buying the licenses. Okay. But when you buy them, you gotta report that you bought it with the CSLB in 90 days. If you don't, then you're gonna have to apply for one yourself. But typically when people buy a corporation, they always get the license transfer and everything too. Okay. And uh, let me just add this in here. Whenever you're dealing with the CSLB, everything is in 90 days. So let's say, uh, what happens when you change your business address? You got 90 days to do it. Let's say uh, someone buys your business and you want to transfer his name to your license. You got 90 days to do it. All right. Anything related to the CSLB is 90 days remember that 90 days for the CSLB okay this is the, probably the simplest thing you could ever do in the test anything related to the a CSLB is 90 days remember that okay same thing anything that has to do with an army or an arm or leaving a company or just or not working anymore with that company it has to be reported with the CSLB within 90 days um, you know, basically things like that. The company has, they say the company who has the, who has the qualifier remove, removed must replace the RME or the RMO within 90 days because you're reporting it to the CSLB. Or you're going to have to have the license suspended from the business, which means you're having him removed under your wing. Okay. If, like, again, if a business name or address is changed, then it must be reported to the CSLB within 90 days. Anything that has to do with the CSLB is 90 days. Okay, that's, that's it. Next is um, contractor's law. Um, basically, how the run goes, how, what are the things that are necessary and stuff like that. That's the next video. Okay, well, see you later.